Good evening to everyone and welcome to the Macedonia Baptist Church of East St. Louis, the church for all generations. I'm Reverend J. Kevin James Jr., the senior pastor here at this great branch of Zion. Listen, we're so glad to have you tonight with our evening with Dr. Ezekiel as we share in a great conversation regarding COVID-19 vaccination and this discussion around our homeless community and population. Listen, before we get started tonight, I want you, those of you who are watching us on YouTube, I want you to take a moment right now and invite at least five people into the virtual space. Invite at least five people who you know will benefit from this conversation. Who's gonna benefit from us? All of us will benefit from this conversation. If you're watching us on, I want you to know this video, there's a thumbs up button. I want you to hit that. The more likes that we have on this video, uh, the more prevalent and the more visible we are to the YouTube community. If you're watching us on Facebook, I want you to go ahead, shout us out, like this love post, share it to your personal page, and invite all of your Facebook family and friends into the virtual space as we have great conversation with our very own director of the Department of Illinois Public Health. I'm telling you, tonight's conversation is gonna be great. So as we set the tone for tonight, I want you to join me in prayer. Pray with me. Our God, who we honor you, God, tonight for this great opportunity to share in a session of information. Thank you, oh God, for blessing us with an opportunity as a community to be able to have our director to share with us. God, I pray tonight that as we hear from her and also as she hears from us in the community, that God, you would not only create a center between the two, but that God, we would be able to be informed and enlightened and excited about moving forward as a Thank you so much for looking beyond all of our faults and seeing our needs. And because you are God, you for everything that you have done. Thank you for keeping us today, despite all that we have experienced, because you are a good God and you are worthy to be praised. So we submit this prayer to you in Jesus Christ's name. We pray. Amen. Those of you who are out there and we're still having church, even in the midst of this conversation. So come on, let's give God praise. Put those hearts out there those loves out there as we celebrate our great God. Listen again, before we bring Dr. Ezekiel on with us, I want you right now, if you're on YouTube, if you're on Facebook, shout out where you're watching from. If you're here in the city of East St. Louis, if you're watching in Fairview Heights, maybe you're watching in Chicago and you're watching us. Uh, let us know where you're watching us from as we are excited for this great conversation on tonight. So I'm gonna ask each and every one of you uh, to help me to welcome back to the Macedonian Director of the Department of Illinois Public Health, Dr. Ezeke. Come on, let's welcome her to the stage. Thank you so much, Doctor, for being with us. Thank you so much. Can you hear me, Pastor? Jan, yes, welcome. Thank you Hello. so much with us tonight. Pleasure to be with you. Hello and good evening, everyone. Thank you to Pastor James, uh, First Lady James, and the entire Macedonia Baptist Church of East St. Louis. I'm so happy to be invited back. I am personally indebted to all of you for what you have been doing continue to do in terms of collaborating with IDPH for the well-being of all of the people of Illinois. And, and speaking of collaborating, the fight against COVID-19 in the East St. Louis area would never be possible 
without the leadership of Elizabeth Patton Whiteside, the public health administrator of the East Side Health District and the unwavering commitment of her entire team. All of you are indeed a blessing and have saved so many lives. I also know our regional health officer, Marilyn Green, a great member of my team and just a blessing to the state. I wanna thank you, Marilyn, for being such an asset and really creating so many successes uh, at these uh, local events. I'll keep my opening remarks short because I really wanna hear from you. I wanna answer as many questions as possible, but just a quick update, and this is really important facts that we all have to realize. You know, we have the vaccine here, that's great. Unfortunately, we also are seeing more people in the hospital than we had just, you know, you know, today's April 22nd, March 22nd, a month ago, we had about 1,100 people in the hospital battling COVID. And as of last night, that number was over 2,000. So more than 1,000 extra people. Uh, so we have to realize that even though the vaccines are here, the fight's not over, you know, so we have to keep uh, doing the things that we have learned in terms of our mask, but of course, getting vaccinated. And even if you've gotten vaccinated, that's not the end of the story. You know, each one, reach one, right? You know, the pastor just told you to reach out and, and find five people to join this important uh, meeting. You know, you have to reach out and find one, five, 10 additional people who have not been vaccinated and get them vaccinated, help them register, take them there, show them how to do it, tell them about your experience. We need to get into that intense ground game where everybody plays a role and is getting others uh, to get that vaccine in their arms. And just so that we're clear, you know, as these rates have, uh, you know, they initially went up and now they're trying to come down. There is one group uh, for which the, vac the rates have continued to go up. And so I do want to make sure that everyone is uh, knowing in case you're in this category that the black African-American population is continuing to see an increase in cases. Uh, and so that's happening in every single age group for African-Americans. So again, everyone, we don't wanna leave anyone behind. We don't want some people to experience wellness and, and freedom from COVID and others to suffer from that deadly disease. So just wanna make sure everyone has all the important facts. And I hope with that facts, uh, then you'll go on and, and get the vaccination. I know there was concern around the J and J vaccine uh, being paused. And really for anybody who says, oh, see, I told you those things aren't good. I, I would have to push back. I'd have to push back on that. The truth is this is proof that these, they didn't just quickly throw some mess out there and say, good luck. You know, even after it was being administered, they are keeping a keen eye, the CDC, the FDA, they are looking out for any kind of reactions that they need to be aware of. Uh, with this recent pause, they did identify six individuals uh, who had a severe reaction. They had a specific kind of uh, blood clot. Again, blood clots happen, you know, on a, on, a, on a regular basis. It's, it's one of the side effects of taking birth control pills. It's one of the side effects of, of being a smoker. It's a side effect that can happen from long plane rides. But they saw six cases of, of this kind of uh, blood clot. But let's remember that they gave out almost 7 million doses. And so the fact that they could pick out six cases across the country, this wasn't just six people all showed up and said, oh, we have blood clots and we all got J&J &J yesterday. They found six cases from across the nation from among those nearly 7 million people and have been watching so closely to pick up such a small signal. So we're waiting for more information on Friday to figure out if there are maybe certain groups that might be recommended just out of an abundance of caution to take one of the other two vaccines, but we have more information to come. So I want you to feel reassured that everyone is looking out for safety, safety in these vaccines and safety for the people who get these vaccines administered. 
So I also care so much about equity. The governor cares about equity and we don't wanna leave anyone behind. And that includes people experiencing homelessness. You know, people experiencing homelessness might be worried that they're, they're maybe not thinking about COVID. They're thinking about where am I gonna eat? Where am I gonna sleep tonight? So we wanna take care of those needs as well as protecting them from this deadly virus, which can do more harm in people who are already vulnerable, like our homeless population. So this is more than uh, a vaccination event that's going to be happening in the East St. Louis area. It is designed to be a health and resource fair that will give participants access to a broad array of much needed services. So before I hand it back over to you, Pastor, I'm asking everyone to join us tonight to please get vaccinated if you haven't already. Make an appointment for yourself, make an appointment for your loved ones, make appointment for friends. Go to coronavirus.illinois.gov or call our toll-free number that's open seven days a week, 833-621-1284. Again, the call center is open seven days a week, 6 a.m. to midnight. I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh with us. And again, uh, we continue to echo those same sentiments of encouragement. And listen, tonight we want to continue and, and I, our director has availed herself to this conversation tonight around our homeless population, our homeless communities. And uh, we know that it is very much uh, prevalent in our state and very much so prevalent here in our St. Clair County area. And so we want to have this conversation tonight in which our director has availed herself to answer some questions for us. And we also want to challenge those of you who are watching by way of YouTube or Facebook. Uh, if you have any questions that uh, you want to be raised and, and we have the time to raise those, uh, please, we're asking for you to drop those in the comment section and we will lift those. Uh, but I want to just kind of start out tonight with a little bit of uh, statistics that I thought uh, was interesting. Uh, as I was doing some 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 studies have shown us in New York City um, who have really just kind of tracked their uh, mortality rates in connection with COVID-19 and the homeless population. And the statistics are showing that uh, the homeless population of mortality uh, was about 70 than the city's general population. So they were seeing an increase, uh, a higher amount of homeless individuals uh, than those who uh, found themselves sheltered. And so tonight, we really believe that this is an important conversation. And I want to challenge those of us who are out there tonight who know of individuals who are considered homeless, who are part of the homeless uh, population. As, as we like to say in the body of faith, uh, looking out for one another in this element of the priesthood of all believers, understanding that we are all each other's advocate. We are all in this thing called life together. And so I want to challenge us tonight that if you know of any individuals who are part of this community uh, and they don't have access to certain things, make yourself available to take them uh, to these places we, as the Dr. Ezekiel mentioned, uh, we have a great event that's happening this Saturday at Lincoln Park in which people will be able to come and we'll share some more uh, detail. But Doc, I want to just kind of start our conversation out tonight with this central question. Um, how has the homeless community been impacted by COVID-19 in our Well, I mean, I, I don't think it would surprise anybody to know that the number of individuals that have you know, presented to emergency shelter locations that needed uh, housing uh, has increased uh, due to the situation that the COVID has presented. Many people have lost their jobs. Uh, many people have uh, lost their their livelihood. Many people have lost family members, maybe who uh, provided that shelter. So uh, the data has told us that the number of individuals seeking uh, emergency shelter doubled in this last year. And of course, we know that people, like you just said, experiencing homelessness are, are at higher risk. They're higher risk of catching COVID and they're also at higher risk of having a bad outcome of actually dying 
of, of COVID because in addition to maybe uh, being having problems with uh, shelter and being homeless, uh, that often goes ha hand in hand with not having access to, to consistent or good medical care. And so if you have underlying conditions that have not been addressed uh, and you stack COVID on top of that with homelessness, uh, it does not make for, for good outcomes. Okay, thank you so much. Now, as we know, with our, our homeless population, um, there there's so many barriers there, whether we're talking transportation, uh, you know, being able to get to these different locations in which vaccination is taking place. How has um, IDP uh, do with addressing the issue of vaccination distribution for our homeless communities? And is there a plan uh, in place? Yeah, so we know that the vaccination is, is the key tool to control the pandemic, and it has to be for everyone, people with homes and people without homes. And, and, and of course, putting that equity lens on our individuals who are experiencing homeless have to be at the top of our list. We don't want people who are already in a precarious situation to, to be forgotten. And so, you know, we are working, of course, we went to uh, shelters and are vaccinating there, but we know that all homeless people are not in a certain location, a certain address. We we have people that are you know under bridges. We have people that are in encampments, and so you know having mobile uh, team is an important piece where we have to have people go out into the community and find these individuals. We can't expect these people to sign up online and and go somewhere, um, we have to make sure that we are as aggressive as we can be in trying to seek out these people that need this important resource and giving it to them, whether they're in a shelter or in another uh, setting. So for individuals who may be, you know, just kind of raising this question when we talk about vaccination, and of course we know that there are some people who are not sold on on getting the vaccine, or you know, just maybe even asking the question, you know, what's the importance of the homeless community being vaccinated? Like, what what's the importance of that? Yeah, well, we definitely know for people who are in, you know, encampments or shelters, you know it's sometimes very hard to maintain distance. You know, we talk about, you know, masking and keeping six feet, but sometimes that in, in these congregate settings where you have lots of people in a single space, it's, it's really hard to maintain that distance. So when you get into that setting or when the infection comes into that setting, it can, it can unfortunately spread like wildfire where everybody get sick all at once because it's so hard to contain it and to keep, you know, separate. If you say, oh, somebody's, you know, positive over here and I'm just gonna scoot over here, uh, it, it's really hard to get that appropriate amount of spacing. So you have to uh, try to protect people. You know, prevention is worth a pound of cure. So instead of trying to treat people after they've already been infected, the goal, uh, the aim would be to prevent the infection with the vaccine. And that's why we've made it a priority. We put, you know, when we had this priority list, after we get, did the long-term care facilities and did the, you know, the people working in the hospital, we, we put the people working in shelters and living in the shelters in that next priority group because it's it's that important. Thank you so much. Listen, uh, just for a moment, I just kind of want to reset the space. Uh, we have some more individuals who've just kind of come in. And again, we're having a conversation uh, tonight with Dr. ZK, who is our director of the Department of Illinois Health uh, public health, excuse me. And so I'm asking those of you who are watching us, uh, if you are sharing this, uh, if you're watching on Facebook, share it to your personal page, invite some friends, tag some folk, let them know uh, to get in a bit more to go. Uh, and we want you to receive as much information as possible. Uh, so Dr. Ezekiel, how do we reach the minds of the population uh, to really make it important to them as a homeless community um, to get back. 
Well, it's it's really important that you're working with people who know this community. It's always about relationship. It's always about trusted messengers and trusted messages. And so you you don't bring a stranger in that people don't know. You know, we have an interagency homeless vaccination working group. Uh, it's directed by Dr. Natasha uh, Dolgen and and with our uh, Dr. Catherine Kennard. And so you know, using data, making sure we identify, you know, the, the vulnerable communities and identify uh, these homeless individuals where they're located. We're prioritizing and identifying those targets, connecting them to the local health department, making sure everybody is aware of specific areas that we need to address. So, you know, obviously keeping it top of mind, making sure you use people who know the community who, who know the layout, who maybe already have relationships, who've already maybe been involved with providing meals. So using community partners that are trusted, that know the lay of the land, know the community that you're trying to serve, that's one of the most important things that we can do so that we're empowering the local communities to take care of their communities. That's good. So I, I kind of want to segue a little bit because we had a comment that just kind of come up in the virtual space. And uh, and I understand that there are many people who are just kind of concerned uh, based off of maybe some negative experiences that other people have had uh, in regards to the shot, whether it was uh, due to allergies, whatever, or, or uh, allergic reaction. I don't know. Uh, but can you just kind of speak to the numbers per se? Uh, for those who may have experienced negatives versus the positives, and for those who are still skeptical, um, like one who we have that's watching and could be representing so many others, you know, really going to be the benefit when I have seen, you know, negatives within my family or within my community, or even to the fact of, you know, media talking about the J and J. Um, what's the benefit of the of the vaccination? Yeah. So I mean, I think. I think I, I, I really try to boil it down and keep it super simple and say, well, you know, yes, some people get like a severe, um, you know, uh, fatigue and muscle aches. They might have this kind of syndrome of feeling bad for most people. It was a couple of days. I've heard of some people that it lasted a little bit longer. Some people have developed, you know, a bad rash more than just the redness they might have gotten a pretty bad rash that they will find, you know, highly inconvenient. Uh, some people have gotten, you know, some swollen lymph nodes that are tender, you know, like, so different side effects have definitely occurred. And we saw this, this very rare uh, blood clot, which again, think about something happening one in a million, your chance of being struck by lightning is, is greater than that. And so, you know, you have to balance it out with what we know are the real risk of actual COVID your risk of getting COVID is so much higher. Your risk of, you know, having, you know, long-term effects. We have young people who never got hospitalized, didn't have a really bad time with COVID, who are still trying to get their sense of smell and, and taste back. They're still not able to smell. You have people who are still complaining of what they call cognitive decline or fogginess, where they're just not thinking straight months after they've had the COVID uh, the COVID-19 illness. So, you know, we, we have seen, you know, when you compare and contrast the side effects that we've seen with the vaccine versus the side effects that we've seen with COVID, which have included, you know, 21,000 deaths in Illinois alone, it, it's really simple to, to do that cost benefit ratio and figure out where you're better off. That's good. Thank you so much, Dr. I want to take a moment just to pause here and again to uh, thank those who are workers in the shelters. We have uh, Pioneer Centers, uh, McHenry County, their homeless shelter that is watching right now, making sure that individuals that are in the shelter are receiving this information. I wanted to be very, very clear tonight that we're not just talking to those who are advocates of the homeless community, uh, but we are actually being viewed right now in many shelters across our state and across St. Clair County because this conversation is that 
uh, important. I just want to ask this, and this was a question that was raised uh, from different individuals in our community, and and that is simply this: How have other cities or neighboring states handled the issue of vaccinating uh, homeless populations? Well, you know, clearly my my focus has been on. Uh, what we're doing here in Illinois. And so, you know, we have had vaccine uh, pop-up clinics. You know, we don't think that it's convenient for people to necessarily get many miles from where they are. So we're moving vaccine clinics all around so that we can hit every nook and cranny of different neighborhoods so that we can have something very close uh, to people that need it. We're working with our uh, navigators. Navigators are in the community, again, community uh, organizations that, that know the lay of the land, that have relationship, that can help us get the vaccine to the, to the right places. So we also know that it's about education. So to all uh, individuals who are experiencing uh, homelessness at this time, who are viewing or listening in, please know we, we care about you. Uh, the communities that you live in, you, we want you to take advantage of this important resource that saves lives. It is proven already in the state of Illinois to save lives. And we know that every single life matters and we want to make sure that no one is left behind. If you're experiencing homeless, you're already, you know, experiencing some difficult times. We don't want COVID to complicate that situation while you're getting, you know, getting everything together. So let's try to protect you from uh, COVID uh, so that we don't have to worry about the, the long-term, short-term effects that COVID has and can deliver. So again, you know, if you haven't gotten vaccinated, you know, please pursue it. If you are offered it, please take advantage. It is it is safe, it is effective, and it absolutely saves lives. Thank you for that, uh, Dr. Zike. And again, I wanna give a, a big shout to uh, one side health district uh, and Mrs. Elizabeth uh, Patton Whiteside, who again is one of the uh, co-sponsors for this event today. We celebrate her and the great leadership uh, that her and her team has been putting off in our community, uh, which East St. Louis is a part of that. Uh, but we want to also shout out the Southern Illinois Health Foundation uh, and Steve and Mercedes and so many of them who are over there. I don't want to call too many names uh, before I get in trouble, but I want to thank them for just the great work that they have been doing. And so just kind of talking about these two uh, the Eastside Health District and Southern Illinois Hair Foundation, um, it's really been this element of collaboration that has really been helping to push uh, getting tested and getting uh, vaccinated. And so Dr. Ezekiel, for our state, when we talk about this element of collaboration, how do we further uh, with the element of collaborating so that more individuals getting vaccinated and what would be your recommendation, especially for maybe our shelters or other organizations that work with the homeless population, how push this element of collaboration uh, so that more individuals are vaccinated? Well, uh, collaboration is an on is an ongoing piece. Uh, it's not a you know work with that local health department on one day, make vaccines available one day, and then keep it moving. You know we have to understand that people may be be uh, mis mistrusting. Uh, and so you have to educate and sh answer people's questions and then be available to come back and answer some questions later. People sometimes take, it's a process to be able to think about making an important decision like putting the vaccine into the arm. And so being able to really uh, be patient and not think just, oh, I told you why you should get it. Like you should get it already. Like you have to come back you know, and re-educate, answer new questions, show other people who've gotten the vaccine. Uh, it's all a process. We need to be respectful of people and their choices. Of course, I know the choice that I want people to make, but, you know, everyone has to get there 
or maybe not get there on their own accord. There, there can't be any coercion, but we need to just respectfully engage uh, these people that we, we support to get what we think is the best choice for them. That's powerful. Thank you so much. And again, um, I hope many people were able to see even that comment uh, from one of our viewers who's watching, Betty, um, who basically shared that she had experienced um, five months long of COVID-19. And thanks to the vaccine, uh, she was able to see the disappearance of uh, those effects. So we're, we're happy to see that people are getting vaccinated and that there are benefits to it. Again, for those of you who are just tuning in, we're in a conversation with Dr. EZK talking about COVID-19, the vaccine. Again, we wanna challenge you, please make sure that you're sharing this and empower your communities, the people that are around you uh, to uh, receiving a vaccine. Well, look, Dr. EZK, we're gonna wrap this thing up a little bit. Uh, so what I want you to do is just, just take a moment Give us any uh, last thoughts, any last words of encouragement. Um, and I'm going to ask if you could especially speak to who I like to call the connectors. These are the people who, you know, they know the streets. They know those who are living out uh, in the streets and that have the influence uh, to be able to get those. And share with me of your last thoughts. Uh, thank you again uh, for this evening. Thank you for your commitment to this uh, population of people experiencing homelessness. Thank you for all the people that are listening. I hope that you're maybe one step closer to either getting the vaccine or at least pursuing uh, getting more information to hopefully make that ultimate choice. To the connectors, to the advocates, uh, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing and know that your work is so critical. Every single person that you can reach, even if it's one today, another tomorrow, that is a step in the right direction. That's a step to making all of our communities safer and getting us to the other side of this pandemic. So thank you for your work. Uh, it's, it's tireless. Uh, you don't get to be in the limelight, but you're making a tremendous difference. And, and again, to the people who are experiencing homelessness, I know that there are many problems and issues that you face. I don't want COVID to be one. And so even if you have experienced uh, COVID uh, in the past, it is still recommended uh, that you get the vaccine to make sure that you're fully, fully protected. Um, I urge everyone to seek, uh, seek this vaccination and seek answers to your questions if you're not quite there yet. But we're not gonna, we're not gonna give up. We're gonna keep educating, keep sharing, keep collaborating to get as many people uh, protected as possible. Thank you so much, Dr. DK. Again, those of you in the virtual space, please help me one more time. Let's celebrate our director. We thank you so much uh, for in, in, in our state. We thank you for investing uh, in our county and in our city uh, to share with us. So again, thank you for being with us on tonight. Uh, we're grateful to have had you. All right, listen, family. Uh, again, we thank you for being with us tonight for this conversation. And it do does not stop here. It continues. We want to continue to encourage each and every one of you. If you have not been vaccinated, please consider doing so. For the life that you save just might be your own or the life of those who are around you. Again, uh, for those of you who live within St. Clair County, uh, and you can go to our uh, Facebook page, also on our website at the church. We'll have information as well for you to connect with Illinois Department of Public Health, uh, also with our Southern Illinois Healthcare Foundation and Eastside Health District. Uh, you to be able to go out there and sign up for the vaccination. Again, many of our uh, health directors have been sharing with us that there are open lots. They're just looking for arms to be able to put the vaccine in. So we want you to strongly uh, consider doing that. Also, I want to invite each and every one of you that are happening in our community. If you live in the St. Clair County area, listen, you might even be on the Missouri side. Drive on over. Nation drive up in Lincoln Park 
uh, that is being put on by the Illinois Department of Public Health, Eastside Greens, uh, and uh, we're also having self Southern Illinois Healthcare Foundation, excuse me, are going to be individuals who are putting this thing together Saturday, April the 24th, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And in fact, you can reserve your appointment. You this on our website. We'll have this on our Facebook page uh, for you to see as well. Uh, and we'll also have this up for you as we log off tonight uh, so that you can schedule your appointment. Again, I have to give great shout outs uh, to Miss Elizabeth Patton Whiteside, Eve Side. I want to shout out our Southern Illinois Healthcare Foundation, Steve and Mercedes. Uh, also to ID. Southern Illinois representative, our director, we thank you uh, for your hard work and to also to Natasha uh, Dogan who helped to make this connection and help us continue to move forward. So again, family of faith, I want you to be connectors. If you've already been vaccinated, encourage other people to be vaccinated as well. And for those who are still skeptical, I'll tell you this, as they've said back in the day and they say it to today, knowledge is power. And how you get that knowledge, read and research. And I guarantee you that you will see the benefit of being vaccinated. Well, I want to encourage you, join us Sunday, 10, 15 a.m. right here in the virtual space. We're going to continue in our sermonic presentation, set the app here. If you never worship with us before, consider worshiping with us this Sunday, 10, 15 a.m. Central Standard Time. And lastly and finally, this Saturday, at 12 noon, we need to come here to the Macedonia Church for our Manna Pantry Clothes giveaway. It's going to be a great time for you to come and to receive them. Uh, if you know of any individuals that are in need of clothing, tell them to come on to the church for all generations. For hundred Friday, will be from 12 noon to 3 p.m. Well, we're getting out of here tonight, so I want you to go ahead and join me in prayer receive this benediction. We thank tonight. Thank you, O oh God, for a blessed opportunity to be able to share our questions and to even have our uh, questions answered. God, I even pray for those who, uh, even after tonight, may still be a little bit skeptical. I pray that you point them in the right direction. Uh, that's the best decision for them. God, I thank you for those who have already made the decision that they will continue to see the strength of their health right now in the name of Jesus. God, hold us and God, allow your peace to surround us until we journey together on Sunday. And now unto him who is able to exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask or think all according to the power that worketh in us. I pray that the peace of God surround us, that the love of God fill us and that the hope we have in God would rise up in us and cause us to do great exploits for the kingdom of God. Be blessed, my brothers and my sisters, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the precious Holy Ghost, and all of God's children in creation said amen. Listen, we love you. We're praying for you. Have a blessed week and weekend. And remember, you are a gift from God. Have a great night.